it partially went how I would predict it. Um, I, I think at least the portion of Shiki fighting back, but there was a nice little note in that chapter that opens a, uh, honestly, I think a really good amount of speculation. But on top of that, uh, my belief on Ziki's situation look, looks like it's hinted in this chapter as well. So there's definitely there, there's definitely going to be a lot, I think, of just general lore up and coming. I don't think it's just going to be as centered on Emperor Nero or on Ziggy. I think there's just going to be a lot of general just um, world building. In, I think actually just like story construction because... In this chapter, we got some guy named Shura dropped, and I think that there's a lot of, um, I think there's a lot really to work out of that. It's not just, oh, a character that's gonna show up in the future. The, the context of it has a lot of value. But anyway, like we start in the chapter, you have Mora, he's glued a bunch of the people to the trees, like a bunch of the members of the Eden Zero crew. And I figured that there wasn't much they could do other than like Shiki has one arm available. So I knew that he, okay, He's able to use his ether gear somewhat and everybody else looks like they're kind of like bound. You still have Pino for the most part, pretty good. I mean, don't she can't really do much. I mean, obviously she has her EMP, but I'm like, that's not gonna help anybody in this situation. We do have Rebecca like being quick and, uh, and just making some very risky decisions. There's throwing Happy Pot as the guns he can fire, but there's no way to aim so he's pretty much just shooting randomly in the direction that uh that we started off on but he ends up getting glued to the tree as well and like i said like this guy i was worried about him being fodder but i like these actually seems pretty tough he wasn't fighting in he wasn't fighting in like a full scenario because like she he obviously started this out kind of bound up uh, he didn't go into his Demon King form. That's a big thing, obviously. If he's got something up his sleeve he can access, then it's not like he just started up as outright superior to Shiki. He can seemingly best normal Shiki, but partially from that, it's because of the fact that he doesn't have a tangible body with his Ether Gear, it looks like. He can, like, have uh, an elemental body with, like, his glue power. So that's definitely useful like when you have a character like she for the most part who doesn't have hacks yet like he's got high mobility he's got like his general gravity abilities he can do with it like it really just depends on how would he go about it like if he could trap him inside like essentially an anti-gravity bubble and then just kind of like drift him up in the air where he can't use his glue and he can he can kind of like ring him out like that style but like right now he doesn't have otherwise a way to put him down it's it's within Shiki's arsenal, but I don't think he's really done anything like that yet. I mean, he can obviously just take the dude up, fly him up there, and just like leave him out in the middle of the sky or something. There's definitely stuff he can do, but I'm wondering like, is this even going to be the fight for him? Is somebody else going to fight this guy? Because I feel like this is definitely you know somebody else on the crew should kind of deal with this dude. He can have it. I think a really good matchup for like. Uh, for like Jin, Jin could you know go up against the sky, do some cool wind shit. Cause when it comes to Shiki, like like it, Shiki doesn't have much for dealing with a character like this at the moment. Um, so I, I don't know if this will be his match. Like the guy with the robot arm orc is probably like closer to him, or that'll be like wise or something. But sometimes you just get characters having power advantages over the other so it, just, it might just be a bad match for shiki at the moment entirely just because like even if he's got his gravity unless he does something like i said like try and like anti-gravity mora up in the air somewhere where he can't reach him or he can't really you know use his glue or anything then there's no way for him to currently beat him well like he just picks up the tree i talked about that in the last uh review that was one of my beliefs that i feel like he had to do and again it's one of those things that's like you can kind of predict it if you know how Shiki's powers work and you know that he obviously could still use his abilities because his arms weren't fully constricted. But at the same time, it was just cool to see. Like, I really liked seeing him just rip the tree up out of the ground and start using the tree that's attached to him as a weapon. I thought that was pretty cool just in general. And then Mora's abilities, again, it reminds me of um, uh, of Nibaru from um, Fairy Tail, the, the uh, Clinging Dragon Slayer similar abilities i guess in the the way that it's like sticky but theirs is completely different in the way that they go about it 
obviously though like this guy's not gonna stack up to nabaru but like it's still really cool like I, I i like that thing about eden zero and fairy tale running at the same time is hiramashima can have an idea for something and it can take it in two completely different directions like when we got scully on the same week as the school fairy for uh school fairy just in general as well as like that parasite that took over lc's body i think it's just cool that you can kind of take like take an idea like that and then put it in two completely different directions because you can look you can look at nibaru and mora and like okay you can see slight similarities in the concept for probably working out their characters but their personalities the the like actual designs and everything else about them is very different and i like that i think that's really cool but shiki was not gonna have a good conversation with this guy because we knew that this guy does not seem he doesn't he doesn't respect robots at all like he doesn't see that they have any feelings he just sees them as you know mechanical beings that who really cares and that it's not gonna fly with shiki we know obviously about shiki like him being raised with by robots he believes that robots have hearts we've seen that robots can have the same uh grasp on emotions that humans can have it really just depends i think on i think it really just depends on like whether or not people are willing to get wrap their head around that about that idea within their world like there's probably still a lot of people it's like oh it's just programming it's just something that's part of their their build where it's like there's definitely there's definitely like machines like old style machines you'd run across like that they're just too basic to really do anything but then obviously like when you get to these these uh machines these robots they can think for themselves and they they essentially have the personality and the mindset and everything that you can really have on a human the only difference is that that they're you know they're originated as machines they have everything else except for the origin but uh now shiki's like throwing hands at this guy throws a punch right in the face the dude's head just kind of turns into like uh you know glue it's like a gelatin and he just starts getting slapped around and like shiki this is the part like i said shiki just doesn't really have anything otherwise to deal with this guy unless he did like you know the anti-gravity bubble thing tries to float him in the air he only would be able to do something like get him out of range and render his abilities useless he doesn't have anything to actually hurt him yet and that's just one of the things either you're gonna have shiki get some broken aspect of his gravity like get some new traits or he's going to not be the one to beat this guy because sometimes like i said sometimes you just have a character who has an all-around better uh his powers just work better against certain characters you're always gonna have that like one character is just gonna oh yeah this guy's abilities counter this character so even if one guy's stronger because of just how well the power counter is like you kind of just run into like a, a bit of a screwy spot when you have somebody like this guy who because of his abilities like his glue he can make things sticky he can stick himself into positions so shiki's uh and Shiki's gravity manipulation isn't gonna have the same level of effect on him and on top of that he can stick Shiki to stuff and that's actually really bad for Shiki because one of Shiki's biggest things is how mobile and agile he is like that's it's been emphasized throughout the the series like and as well as the heroes crossover Shiki is strong but Shiki's biggest trait is just how he can move how well he can just kind of like pretty much take the entire man, uh, the the entirety of the area and turn it in his terrain and somebody who can kind of prevent that is definitely like a bad deal for him to be going up against but then like the other two members of, of uh, Morris crew show up you have orc and Brittany. you got like Brittany's just saying like you shouldn't be saying stuff like that you're gonna offend orc because he's half machine so you have a cyborg guy and him being a cyborg makes me think that he might he's either gonna be the opponent for Jin or the opponent for shiki just because i feel like him, him being Simu the leader might be, uh, you know, the bad guy for Shiki or for Jin. It, it can't be Wise, because Wise would be too good against him. If he's got a mechanical arm, Wise would kind of uh, instantly screw him because he could just machine a maker, like, mess with his arm. I, I think with Jin, though, it'd be cool because you have two of these badass-looking characters and both of them cyborgs. Who knows? Um, we'll definitely see some of these kind of pan out, some of these fights uh, moving forward. But... The thing that made me really interested is when Brittany goes and does like a scan and she says like they're talking about his ether it's like identification code demon king and they say the same as Shura's so here's why I think that's extremely interesting because like the rest of the chapter like we, we get information on Ziggy like like I said there there's 
the belief that sh that Ziggy isn't like this willingly, maybe it's some form of virus. I still believe that how he's like affected the robots on this planet is some form of programming virus. And it looks like it's hinted at that near the end of the chapter. And, um, and Hermit even says that it could corrupt the four shining stars or three of them because can't affect Homura. But in fact, the, uh, the shining stars. And so I, I think that just makes sense. Uh, again, that's something I predicted and I liked as well as like Shiki ripping the tree out of the ground I liked. But the thing that has me the most interest in this chapter, even if I didn't predict it, I think like the concept of it, if there are more than one Demon King like trainee people, if Shiki is like, imagine if Ziggy had, Ziggy or even more characters had other like other candidates like there are more people that kind of fall under this role of getting this demon king title so like is it just going to be the sure guys they're going to be like shiki is one of four one of five or what maybe one of six i guess would make sense because if you're going to do demon stuff like the demon king six like six 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 would probably make a lot of sense as well as actually because you already have the Arasion say galactic and interstellar that's two sixes but maybe you can have that plus the six uh, demon king people maybe that'll be the number either way that that to me is the most interesting part of the whole chapter because it has such an interesting idea attached to it what if he is a candidate and there's multiple that are going to be competing for this position it's not just going to be shiki i like that i think that's going to be really cool just to see in the future and I, I am genuinely very curious just exactly what Mishima has planned. I think that we could get a lot of just generally really good build from even one, even seeing one of these guys. Because if, if there are, if there are more than just the two, then I feel like each of them having kind of like this rival spot for Shiki would be really cool. Because then it's rival, it's not even just rival characters, it's rival crews and rival ships. And I think that would be a lot of fun seeing them uh, just absolutely like explore the cosmos. And you could have the Interstellar who are like this, uh, you know, this police force, you know, this military unit of style of like these high powerful six characters. And then you have the Galactica who are each their own bosses, each kind of like renowned and all have their own standings. And then you could have like the six Demon King candidates and they're like all competing and you'd have like Shiki's, uh, you know, rivals and whatnot and other characters. Cause then you could have like a very solid set of characters to work around. You have like six, six big villains, six big uh, antagonists with the inner interstellar and then six big uh, kind of like rival spots. You wouldn't really need to have a whole lot of, of of groups beyond that to really work out an idea for the story but anyway other than that no comment below thumbs up the video but for the like button subscribe button and check out my other videos further than that i appreciate everybody's already subscribed thank you all for listening bye